Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Bregaton. Let's check in with our colonies and continue exploring. Cool, finish the project on Yanis. And the reaping requires that we do giants on Kiava Gamma. But we can do this rank 3 project. Forest fortresses. We're missing people for mechanized servants. And Zeta defense is blocked off. Because we can't do dark sages. Neither one of these stand out roleplay wise. You can make an argument for either one. I feel like... My Commissar would be less reliant on the Mechanicus, so let's go with the uh, Forest Fortresses. Plus, we can do it right now. And the inhabitants of Yanis are restless. The populace may be placated by turning agri-complexes into impenetrable fortresses. We get four security, which I think this also provides. And a weapon. Harkala's Honor. Grants an additional area attack that affects all adjacent cells around the wielder. And plus one damage per character in the party. Is that plus one damage per character in the party in general, or just for the onslaught attack? Doesn't matter. Alright, so we have to do mag trains to do Chapel of Enumeration, because that'll give us the mechanisms we need for this. And Chapel of Enumeration will give us the efficiency we need to do Giants. Which then means we can do the Reaping. Mag Trains. A planet's manufacturums are only as efficient as its logistical system. Lex Mechanics predict a major growth in the world's overall manufacturing output. If haulers and airships make way for powerful mag trains speeding along a web of long-distance railways. We get one profit factor and three mechanisms. Oh, we could have done Inferno, too. That sounds pretty cool. Alright, let's head to Mortis Aces. We gain two profit factor. All right, finished mag trains. Let's do Chapel of Enumeration. Only the revered and marvelously equipped temples of the Adeptus Mechanicus earn the right to become chapels of enumeration. Underneath their majestic vaults. Cyber Thurges exercise devastation wreaking digital rakshas, while data smiths awaken the spirits of the blessed cogitators with arithmetical liturgies and lex prayers. We'll get two weapons and three efficiency. Forgot to repair our hole previously. Anytime our profit factor goes up, it's always worth checking out our trade partners. We get the Peripheral Visor. Each time the wearer spends 10 stacks of tactical advantage, they gain plus 1 resolve until the end of combat. An anatomist amulet. The wear inflicts the bleeding, burning, or toxin effect on a target. 
This target gets an additional plus two stacks of this effect. No reason to swap to that. Yeah, we can give her this because she has the Splinter Pistol, which has the Toxic Needle attack. Peculiar settlement. This planet can barely sustain life, and yet, searchers discovered a long lost Imperial colony, one that was cut off from the rest of the galaxy centuries ago. The colonists live in conditions worse than any underhive, yet they still venerate the Emperor and gladly welcome their visitors. The Lord Captain receives an invitation from the local ruler, the Archqueen Princeps Domina. Pay the Archqueen an official visit. The ruler meets the Lord Captain in a shack. Considered to be a palace by the people here. The Archqueen's unusual crown is made out of metal coils, most likely parts of an ancient device for boiling water. The guests are served the finest delicacies the colony can provide. The Archqueen praises the visitors and mangled low gothic and calls the Lord Captain her dear brother. At the end of the audience, gifts are presented to the guests. The Archqueen's minister delicately remarks that the best possible gift the Lord Captain and his crew could provide would be the replenishment of the colony's meager gene pool. We're not going to mingle. Just in case. We'll play it safe. The Lord Captain decides that standard gifts will suffice. The Archqueen is satisfied and hopes to meet again. You know, tell them what the crew would bring back onto the ship if they went down there to reproduce. Swift and merciless retribution is a proper fate for many transgressors, but the Imperium permits using the convicts for hard labor on distant prison worlds like Vibo 6. To turn for their crimes before humankind, hundreds of thousands of rogues and lowlifes toil in the mines of the Von Valance's protectorate until death from exhaustion or some other unfortunate accident claims their forsaken souls. But no resources. I guess they're just breaking up rocks. It's a prison planet where they're mining. I think we get something from it. Martyr's Penance. The wearer can make an Inferno Pistol shot at short range once per combat. That shot deals from 10 to 14 damage and has 40% armor penetration. It's 
So I'm going to prioritize the Jerusians because I want Roaring Thunder. Alright, to Odanathus, 11. There was a commotion on lower decks. The chief mutant hunter, who is responsible for eliminating heresy in the hold of the void ship, went mad due to the perilous influence of the warp. The officer climbed the parapet above the central accelerator complex, and threatened to jump unless the entire crew immediately submitted to rigorous examination to uncover physical deformities and unholy perversions. After calculating the time and financial cost of the inspection of thousands upon thousands of crew members, and consulting the tech priests about the danger of foreign materials getting into the intake of the accelerator complex, the deranged mutant hunter was graciously allowed to proceed with ending his life in the desired manner. <laughs> Sorry, we can't afford that. Go ahead and jump. The immaterium releases from its grip. This time. <laughs> I do a flip. Oh gosh. A Lord Captain, Yukari ships are patrolling the system. The likelihood of slipping past the patrols unnoticed is close to zero. Did we not come in from the other direction? Oh, that's quick save. So I wonder, we don't normally see multiple groups of ships like this. If we attack one, if they all swarm us. Either way, we'll get to the Astriani first. The Eldari. The Augur crew picks up a heavily damaged Xenos void ship among the countless rock masses of the asteroid belt. An Adari vessel beyond a doubt. According to the Von Valancius archives, about a hundred standard years ago, the Imperial Navy set up a barrier in the system against pirates and the enemies of humanity. Countless prime mines are still scattered among the wreckage. The Voxmaster manages to tune the ship's systems to an unconventional frequency, and the bridge suddenly fills with chime-like Xeno's voices. Drawn out and mournful, they sing in an unknown tongue, but every officer on the bridge can sense that this is a dirge. Answering the call, Elliot jumps to the cogitators, startling the officers on the bridge with her sudden jolt. In the hopes of understanding the Monkai technology and figuring out how to help her kin, the Adari runs in circles around blinking vid screens, but the mysteries of the machine god elude the Xenos. Then, she turns to the Lord Captain, powerless. Early is asking the Elentok to help her kin who have found themselves trapped in a snare of fate. The Eldari are enervated and weak, and their song is a cry of despair, a cry that is fading. The Rock Trader orders his officers to establish communications with the Eldari vessel. Let's do this first. Uh, the Lord Captain inquires after the state of the vessel. The Eldari vessel's hull and engines have presumably been damaged in a collision with a small celestial body. However, it is impossible to prove or disprove this hypothesis at such a distance. The Xenos' vessel differ too much from those of the Imperium. Uh, the Rogue Trader orders his officers to establish communications with the Eldari vessel. However, the Xenos do not respond to the incoming signals. After several attempts, the frequency tuned by the Vox Master gets lost, and the mournful song fades away. Logistics officers led by a Master Helmsman Ravor are ordered to plot a course for the rescue shuttle from the Dynasty's flagship to the Xeno ship and back. Now all the crew can do is hope that the calculations are correct, and that the veteran officer's experience has not let them down. So, roleplay-wise, I should probably just leave them to their fate, but... I wonder if we can collect these mines. Also, rescuing Xenos would give us subjects to study. We'd be better equipped to fight Xenos in the future. 
and there's a ton of Drukari vessels around. We recognized that when we first entered the system. It's not unheard of for the Imperium to ally with Eldari. It almost always ends in betrayal, but it does happen. The Lord Captain orders his servants of the Machine Cult to prepare a plan for clearing the minefield without harming the Xeno ship. After several hours pass on the ship's clock, the servants of the Omnissiah present a plan for the neutralization of the ancient mines. The success of the operation is assessed as extremely probable. The Lord Captain gives the order to clear a path to the vessel detonating the mines indicated by the Tech Priests. On the Lord Captain's command, the ship's cannons fire several powerful salvos. As soon as the shots reach their mark, a cascade of soundless explosions erupts within the asteroid field and spirals around the Eldari vessel. Once the explosions quiet down and the shards of asteroids, space debris, and void mines dissolve into the darkness of the void, the rescue team sets off toward the miraculously intact Xeno ship. However, when the shuttle reaches the Xeno ship, the rescue team's report catches the bridge crew off guard. The vessel's starboard side has been breached by the macro weapons of an unknown Imperial void ship. There are no survivors. I wonder if that's supposed to be the case every time we try to rescue them. Because earlier there was a combat between uh, Imperial ships and Eldari. I think we even helped the Imperial ships, right? I wonder if we, even if we tried to rescue them, if they were going to be dead by the time we got to them. It's kind of the fate of the Eldar. They're supposed to be a dying race in the setting. Shielding her eyes, Erlet closes them and clutches the spirit stone at her breast. Coming to, the Eldar does not speak for a time. With notes of sadness in her voice, carefully picking her words, she can see that the Elentok did all they could to save her kin. And yet it is the Mon Kai who are responsible for the loss of the Eldari Voidship. Saddened by the pain and hatred that humans have wrought upon her kind, Erlia quietly leaves the bridge. Sometimes it's simply impossible to outrun fate. After some time, Erlia comes to the Lord Captain, Haggard still holding on to hope. She says that she came aboard the Mankai vessel and set off into the darkness in the hopes of finding her kin, but found only corpses slaughtered by humanity's hatred. And though she and the Lord Captain are not always in agreement, Yelentok still tried to lend a helping hand. In gratitude, as she promised, she shares the coordinates of her kin's cash. So we have some stuff we can trade real quick. And I guess we start picking off the Jukari. Quick save before we do it. I wonder if I can make it to any of these planets before we have to fight them. Nope. You've got to get past the enemy ships unnoticed. The nearest Rukari ship attacks at once. Get ready. Others will soon join it. The ship's crew is up to the challenge. Not that they have a choice, because that's the only option available to us.
Let's make them regret ever crossing our path. I've seen that before. Ah, there's only two ships. That's Rebel. <laughs> Your crude shield technology is insufficient to weather this storm. Oh, we're fine. All right, what do we got here? So they have a Subsidian Shadow Field. His enemies suffer a minus 25% penalty to hit chance when attacking from within a two cell range, and a 75% penalty to hit chance when attacking from outside. So we want to get close. Oh, more are spawning in. Ten rounds left. Do I need to survive for ten rounds? In that case, maybe I shouldn't be ramming my ship into other ships. But I did just upgrade my prowl, so I'm gonna keep ramming. <laughs> I could do that and then one tap them after the fact. And I'll be in range to... Oh, see, now we have to, like, circle around and try to do it. Alright, let's do this. Coordinate set. With the force of a supernova. Helmsman, take us in. Go and pop this. hard to position to ram these guys. They're so maneuverable. They keep positioning behind me, too. Got an idea. Lance batteries. Volley. Nice. Keep up the pressure. Now the problem is I do have my unshielded side exposed, but we get it back at the end of this turn, right? Or is it the start of the next turn? Hang tight. Hey, more ships. One behind us, too. Stupid Drukari. Oh, this side's exposed. I think he's shooting me in the flank. I'll take that gladly. I'm gonna get close. I'm range my torpedoes. Uh, I have to go around it. Oh, that sucks. They're close enough, Well, They moved up a bit. Alright, so we should be able to... Let's get him in range. 
Yeah. Alright. Yeah, suck on that, loser. Can't quite reach him to ram him. But I can do this. With the force of a supernova. Let them taste our fury. This would be a good fight for my ultimate. Unfortunately, it's not up. Launch batteries. Fully. A little damage. Engage the engines. Prepare for acceleration! Alright, what can we do from here? Probably not a whole lot. Fire at will. Oh, nice! It's actually a, a good bit. Range of six. Now let's do this. I will jump forward. Oh, more ships. Great. I think there was a turn there where they didn't spawn more, right? Is it every other turn they spawn in? Hurt. That's not too bad. Not great, but not not too bad. Son of a gun. Alright, so we self destruct next to these guys. And then we need to... I have remaining rounds. So we can't access void ship management from here. Can we repair our ship? We can. Are we getting scrap as we take out enemies? Yeah, let's go do that. Okay. Uh, we could position here. I don't think we can hit anybody, though. So maybe we do... Launch batteries fully! We get some free damage in. If I do this, I think... Oh, we can. Position here, can I reach? Once again, I can. All right. Salvo! Not quite enough. I'm glad I repaired, because I think they just did that more damage than we had health left. 
I think we had like 79 health. So they keep flanking around us. I'm not entirely sure how to counter that. Engage the engines. With the force of a supernova! Nice. Alright, come and get some, buddy. If you're the last ship, I'll be thrilled. And if not, I'll still be thrilled. It means more Xenos to kill. Specifically Jukari, who are the worst Xenos. And it's not really a competition. Hey, our ultimate's up. Yeah, suck on that, Drukari. Now what? There we go. Alright, I just had to like force it by opening another menu. Didn't see what we got though. Is this what we got? The Godsbane Lance Weapon? So another medium range dorsal lance weapon dealing 20 more damage across the board. So yeah, we'll, we'll definitely equip that. And check out these planets. Uh, that's you, Plasteel. It's not worth an extract you. Hey, a fourth piece of that. That has to be the last one, right? We'll uh, take a look at that in a moment. Seven flamers. Okay. Alright, showing the way. Owing to his keen intellect and more than a bit of luck, the rogue trader managed to discover several ancient Imperial ships and restore the Archaeotech compass mechanism pointing to the location of the fleet's mothership, the Muro 79 system. Well, I know where we're going next time. Good old Muro 79. Right down there. Real quick, let's do some trading. Got a ton of weapons and equipment from that one planet. Uh, we want to prioritize these guys as much as we can. Nice. We get it six. Not super excited about that. I am excited about that. Especially with our current ultimate. That's gonna be pretty silly. Okay, 
I'm going to call it here, and next time we'll head back to Muro 79 and try and find that mothership. I'm hoping it's a dungeon. And then we'll continue exploring. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.